So now that we've established many different genetic diseases and disorders that are seen in human genetics, we're going to now be looking at a different angle to this story thus far. We're going to be switching gears one more time and now look at how to combat these problems. How do we fix, not fix necessarily, but how do we look at these problems from novel angles that will allow us to combat them. And the basic idea behind this will be uh, further represented in this next couple of flowcharts, in these next couple of flowcharts entitled Genetic Testing and Counseling. So this is very relevant research, very relevant results that are going to come out of our knowledge on human genetics. Genetic testing and counseling, and we'll entitle it Roman numeral one. Uh, there will be two parts to this. So the purpose of genetic testing, the purpose of genetic counseling is simply for early detection. Because if we have early detection, just like anything in medicine, early detection will allow us to prevent better prevent, let's say, and better alleviate a known situation that is about to happen, a known disease that we have information on, that we have ways to treat. The earlier that we know that it's there, the earlier that we can prevent it, and thus the earlier that we can alleviate the disease altogether. So there are two main types of genetic testing that we're going to be going over in this flowchart. The first one is called amniocentesis. So it's called amniocentesis. So big fancy word. This first genetic testing is utilized to diagnose disorders prenatally. So we'll write that down. This is utilized to diagnose disorders because this is what we've been talking about. How do we fix this? How do we function out of these disorders? How do we work off of them? We'll use something like amniocentesis to diagnose the disorders prenatally. Okay, So prenatally means that this is happening within the womb, let's say. And the main idea behind amniocentesis is to do the following. It's to sample, and this is where the name comes from, amnio, sample amniotic fluid. So in a developing embryo, within the womb of the mother, there's a fluid that surrounds the fetus. And that fluid is known as amniotic fluid. So it surrounds our developing fetus within the mother. And what you can do with this very crucial amniotic fluid, this life-sustaining fluid, is actually, if you sample it, you can actually get live, real living fetal cells that are just a product of the fluid itself, fetal cells in fluid. So you go within to the womb and you um, sterilely and systematically remove some, some fluid, some amniotic fluid, and within that fluid you can get live fetal cells in that fluid. The method of amniocentesis um, is the following, and your textbook has a great image of the method. Um, my playlists on the YouTube section of the site also have, on the playlist section of the site, also have a great video showing you amniocentesis. Um, in this method, we usually do it at about 14 to 16 weeks into the pregnancy. Um, we utilize an ultrasound in order to guide the process. And also within this method, we take about 20 mLs of fluid, um, 20 milliliters of amniotic fluid. So that's our basic method behind amniocentesis. And then what do we do with this information? What we do is we analyze the cells. We have technologies, aka DNA technology, aka why you learned about DNA technology, to analyze the cells. But first we have to go through a bit of a laborious process, a bit of a labor-intensive process, of culturing the cells. We have to grow them, let's say, artificially on a plate. Um, we have to give them the perfect environment for growth. And this takes a couple of weeks. So it's a bit of a long, drawn-out process in order to analyze. But once we've cultured them, we can do something like a biochemical analysis on them. And that biochemical analysis will really give us many different, there are many different biochemical analyses that we can do. But in order to do or after doing a biochemical analysis, we can actually check for things like um, inborn errors of metabolism. We'll get back to that idea in a later flowchart, in a, one of the last ones. So biochemical chemical analysis for inborn errors of 
metabolism specifically. So again, what we're trying to do is genetic test right now. What we're trying to do is early detection. We can early detect through a biochemical analysis, let's say an inborn, meaning something you're born with, error within metabolism. Um, and we can also analyze the cells by doing something known as a karyotype. A karyotype will give us a very, very good picture um, and possibility of any chromosome number problems. We can karyotype the individual, lay out all of the chromosomes and see if any problems within chromosome number and sometimes even within chromosome structure are seen all through amniocentesis. Centesis. Remember getting this amniotic fluid, culturing the cells, the live fetal cells that is, within this fluid in order to do those two type of tests. So that's one of the ways. The other way, um, a lot of people consider this a greater under a greater way to understand and detect more things is something known as chronic uh, villus sampling. And we can just abbreviate that as CVS, not the drugstore, but not the pharmacy, but chronic villus sampling. In this situation, what we're going to be doing is we're also going to be sample something, but this time we're going to sample tissue. We're going to sample chronic villus CV tissue. What is chronic villus tissue? Chronic, chronic villus tissue is actually tissue that is part of the placenta. And if you know anything about development, if you know anything about an embryonic development, the placenta is a hugely important exchange organ. What do I mean by exchange organ? Exchange organ, meaning that the mother and the fetus will have a direct, intimate relationship of exchange through the placenta. So if you can sample a part of the placenta, you will actually get cells that have the exact genotype. So the cells have the genotype of the future fetus within this CV tissue that you've sampled. So that is critical to get this genotype out of the CV tissue. Now, what is the method for this? The method is a bit invasive, okay, but it's important to understand its uh, process. The method happens a little bit earlier, actually, at about 8 to 10 weeks within the pregnancy. And this is, method is going to be very sort of bare bones. It's going to be a narrow tube that's going to be inserted through the cervix, okay? The cervix is the opening of the vagina into the uterus, okay? Cervix to the uterus, and you use suction, okay? This tube will use suction to, so that's a plus sign meaning and, suction to get a uh, sample the sample tissue that's necessary. So watch a uh, video on this process or watch uh, or look at a figure in your textbook one more time on this process. And then finally we'll conclude by talking about the analysis of this tissue. What is the benefit of chronic villa sampling? Well, one main idea is that you have to understand that chronic villa sampling as compared to amniocentesis actually provides you with lots and lots and lots of cells, okay? Because these cells are actually coming from the actual part of um, the fetus, okay? They're actually being a part of the fetus that's going to represent and show us the genotype that we're, that's in question. These cells are known to proliferate for that reason rapidly. They grow rapidly. They do not need to be cultured. They don't take weeks on weeks on weeks um, to be analyzed like an amniocentesis, they actually have the ability to proliferate a lot faster, and thus I'm going to write that down. It's faster than uh, its other comparison than amnio, let's say, faster than amnio. The analysis, at least here, is faster, let's say, tests like these biochemical analyses or karyotypes than amnio. So that's our first idea behind genetic testing and counseling. We'll continue our discussion on this by looking finally at something known as newborn screening in the next video.